On March 1st, 2014, hundreds of climate patriots set out from Los Angeles, California, walking 3,000 miles across America to Washington, D.C., inspiring action to resolve the climate crisis. This will be one of the largest coast-to-coast -coast marches in American history. On May 30th, 2014, they marched into Colorado. I'm walking across the United States and biking for uh, climate justice and bring greater awareness about what's happening to our climate, what's happening to our globe. And our future. And our future. Everywhere we go. We have uh, 300, about 300 signed up to participate, but they're all doing like you know various sections, and some of them are no shows and things like that. They're all like people come in and out a lot. So yeah, we like have, I like, just joined in Taos. I haven't been walking for that. And we have some people who joined in the beginning and went to Phoenix and I joined in Arizona. So we have people coming in and out from all over yeah. The uh, Great March for Climate Action is all about trying to motivate the general public and our leaders to take action on the crisis of this century. Uh, if we don't wake up and understand what's going on and begin to do something about it, we're going to be in a world of hurt. I'm concerned about the welfare of my children and especially the welfare of my uh, grandson, Nolan. Uh, the world he's going to inherit from us is going to be a very challenging one. I think the act of human connection, independently from any conversation about the climate crisis, is an important step towards solving the climate crisis. I'm 71 and I've walked every step of the way from L.A. to Colorado. What an adventure. I've always wanted to come to Colorado and I'm seeing these mountains and I just I can't believe my eyes every, every step of the way. I'm just entirely enamored by how beautiful this country is and it feels so good to see the other people around the country too that are also being affected by this and who also care about this and to know that it's it's much bigger. We may be a small group but we're affecting a lot of people and inspiring a lot of people. It feels really amazing to be a part of it. I still can't believe I'm here. <laughs> My name is John Abbey and um... I live with and, and work with a fellow Tom Atley who was on the 1986 Great Peace March. Uh, there's been a lot of cross-country marches or long-distance marches to make a point. Uh, so at that time they were calling for nuclear disarmament and now we're working on the climate crisis. I was on that peace march that John Abbey was talking about in 1986. I was 23 and it was the time of my life. It changed my life. It changed the direction in my life. And that gives it a sense of importance that I think we're only capable of feeling when we hear the stories of how other individuals have been affected. It's a way to see, you know what I mean? Like, and you can ride a bike. That's another option. If you don't want to walk the whole time, you can bring a bike. Tomorrow morning, uh, Dr. Jones, Marty Jones, he's a chemist, organizing a, a bike ride to meet you guys in Fort Garland. Yeah, I heard about that. I've marched from San Francisco, the little village, to here. It's really amazing. You just see all these people. Remember that this is like such a cool cause and so many real troopers out there. And there's a bucket of sawdust here and we'll put sawdust on top of it. Also hearing the stories of how different communities that we pass through have been affected by climate change has been really amazing because we can sort of carry these with us to Washington DC. Saw this little these little words that said climate action. And I'm like, what what's this? And I clicked on it and opened the world. And it took me about an instant after reading it um, to say this is what I wanted to do, this is where I wanted to go. You know it's the main specific issue of our time. Are we gonna are we gonna change our relationship with the natural world so that we don't create disasters like this for ourselves or not? I'm doing everything I can including this march to raise awareness that people are listening to our message and many of them haven't thought much about it but as they talk about it as we discuss it with them they seem to be understanding that yeah we've got something uh, we've got to work on here it's a prayer of sorts as I go across we need, we need serious climate action in the next year or two years the next year or two years are pivotal yes we are a focus group of people on an issue that is planetary so I don't want to wait four years in order to be able to work for that 
so that's definitely driving me. It's also a challenge because it tests us as individuals. A uh, long past time to act on this, and um, I'm marching hoping that that lets people know, you know what a big deal it is and uh, to make what changes they need to make. <laughs> that is where it starts. So I, I'm, I'm passionate on so many levels. The idea on the march of the virtual marchers, and if we don't get actually people with feet on the ground, we'd like to have a lot more virtual marchers. We hope the march continues to grow. When we get to Washington, D.C., we hope the final impact will be significant just before the midterm elections. I'm so grateful to have an opportunity to do this all day, every day. Hey, come and join us. It's got to be a rare opportunity to be in a, a nomadic community that's working passionately uh, for something that's really important and matters. So if these issues move you at all and you think you'd enjoy being in the company of other people uh, who are working hard on it, come, come and join us. The key, key component is to surrender your heart. That's what you got to do. Nothing will change if you don't have compassion and don't surrender your heart. And just follow what's good. I just would say that the premise of my action are my footsteps. And that I think making footsteps across the country makes a difference.